In this video, we're going to solve the nonlinear equation of motion for a pendulum. I've written the equation here, um, and we derived it in a previous video. There should be a link in front of you. And the idea is, is we would like to find a numerical solution to this, and we do this by converting the second order ordinary differential equation into what's called state space form. State space form is just a fancy way of saying a system of first order differential equations. So this is a second order ODE. We can rewrite this equation as theta double dot of t is equal to minus g divided by l times sine theta of t. And then in order to convert it into a first order equation, we define, this is somewhat arbitrary, what we call it, but we'll define a new coordinate that we call x, which is equal to theta dot. I'm going to, for shorthand, I'm going to leave out the time dependency here. That we'll call equation 2, and therefore it would imply that uh, the time derivative of x, x dot, is equal to theta double dot. All right? Therefore, x dot is equal to minus g divided by L sine theta. We'll call this number 3. Now, I'm just going to stack equations 2 and 3 in a vector, in vector form, or matrix form. Uh, starting with equation 2, I'm going to just rewrite it this way. x dot, I mean theta dot, is equal to x. And then x dot from equation 3 is equal to minus g divided by L sine of theta. And I could put vectors around this curly brackets. And the idea is, call this number four, I could rewrite this in the form of y dot is equal to f. Okay, where each y dot and f are vectors. I can then rewrite this as in discrete form as y at time t plus one minus y at time t divided by delta t and that's equal to f. And in order to come up with a time-stepping solution for this, I can rewrite this at y at time t plus 1 is equal to y at time t plus delta t times f. And remember that y, we define y dot, but y um, is equal to just theta and x. Oops. Theta and x, which is equal to theta x, uh, theta and theta dot. So just to recap, we know the initial conditions, y at time, at the initial time t. We can find, we can advance the solution at each time step, finding y of t plus 1 using this equation. And then each of our y's that we find is actually a vector containing theta and theta dot in it. So we really are interested in theta, which would be the first component of that vector. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is put in some comments here, in order just to give a bit of structure to this. First thing we're going to do is we're going to define the equations. Uh, then we need to set up our parameters, um, our initial conditions, and we'll then find the solution uh, to the nonlinear problem. Uh, I think for good measure we should find the solution too to the linear problem so that we can compare the two. And finally, we're going to plot the results. And that's the basic structure of the code that we want to write. Okay, so we're going to import a few things here. First of all, we're going to import NumPy as NP. Um, 
We're also going to need the sine and cosine function, so we might as well just import that. Sine and cosine, oops, that should be sine. Um, in order to solve it, we're going to use a function, the nonlinear problem. We're going to use a time stepping function that's given to us by SciPy. It's called ODE int. And the way ODE int works is you've got to give it your equations, you've got to give it your initial conditions, which will send as a list. Um, and we've also got to give it times, so various uh, time intervals. We'll just call time. And uh, in order to use that, we've got to import that actually from SciPy integrate. Uh, import ODE int. And uh, since we're going to be plotting, we'll input matplotlib pyplot um, as plt. Um, I think that's a good start. So now what we need to do is fill in a bit of meat here. Uh, first of all, defining the equations. We'll call this equations. And what this will take is the initial state vector and also the times t. That requires a colon. Now, first of all, we'll say that theta and y, these are our two variables, initially are going to equal the state vector. State vector is going to be passed in as a list. We'll do that in a second. Um, and then the functions, we'll just call it f equals, and we set this up as a list. So based on what I did on the worksheet, the start of this video, we know that the first function is just theta dot equals x. We actually only need to put the x. We don't need to put the state, the state vector. And then the second function is just minus g divided by l times sine of theta. Parentheses here. And then I need to return f. So we're going to send an initial state, y naught. Uh, we're going to set theta and y initially to y naught. And then we've got to set up our functions, which are a function of x and sine of theta. Okay, x and sine of theta are our variables. Um, Set up the parameters. We're going to need g. Oops, g is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration due to gravity. And let's just set the length of the pendulum equal to 1, 1 meter, that would be. Um, we can also set up our time interval. Time will just be, uh, we'll use numpy a range function. And we'll go from 0 to 10 seconds in time steps of 0 0.025. Um, the time step is somewhat arbitrary. I wanted to pick one that's small enough to capture the nonlinearities, uh, but not so small as it takes uh, going to take way, way longer to run. Um, our initial conditions we'll set up as the initial angle. Whoops. initial angle and we're going to set that up in degrees I think probably is going to be easier let's just call it 45 degrees okay we know I know that 45 degrees is in the nonlinear range um, we mentioned in a previous problem that to keep this linear uh, for the linear approximation to hold that this angle should be about 10 degrees or less so 45 degrees will put us in the nonlinear range. That way we can compare the difference between the nonlinear results and the linear results. Um, initially, theta, we'll call it theta 0, is equal to... We want to take the initial angle and we want to convert it. So we're going to just say it's NP radians of the initial angle. 
So all I've done here is taken the initial angle and the num5 function's radians converts degrees to radians. And x naught, which you recall is just the velocity, theta dot actually, um, we're going to say that that's zero. But in general, we can also use the NP radians function. We'll put it in a zero, but it gives us the ability to change it in the future. And uh, you can assume the zero, so it doesn't matter, but this is converting from degrees to radians. So actually what goes in the parentheses here would be uh, degrees per second, angular velocity. Um, and we've already got this to find the results. Uh, let me just change it a little bit to satisfy the initial conditions. But equations, I have the function up here. Uh, time is what we've just defined over here. And this list of initial conditions, I just need to put in theta naught and x naught. That's that. And then I've actually got to make it equal to something. Um, why don't we just call this... Theta, well, we've used the, um, let's just call it theta one. And that's it. That's pretty simple. Um, the solution to the linear problem, well, that's pretty easy. We'll call omega, I don't have an omega, so we'll call it W, uh, is numpy square root of G over L. We know that's what omega is. It's root G divided by L. And we'll call it theta 2. So, so theta 1 is the nonlinear results, uh, what theta is for the nonlinear case, and theta 2 will be for the linear case. And we know that this is just, um, it's theta 0. Uh, how do we want to do this? It's, hmm, for t in time. This is going to be theta zero, theta naught, which is the initial theta times cosine, that's how we'll do it, cosine of omega t. Did I get that right? Theta naught times cosine omega t for t in time. Yeah, that's correct. So it's going to go through time, through each one of these times, and it's going to find out uh, theta times cosine omega t, and it's going to store that in a list, actually, called theta2. Okay, to plot the results, um, I think just for neatness, I'm going to put this in, I'm going to do it this way. We'll create a function called plot results, and it will take the time, theta1, whoops, theta 1 and theta 2. And then we'll define this function up here. Oops, it needs a colon after it. And um, we'll say plt plot uh, time versus now remember that theta 1 is actually equal to uh, theta and x, and x is the velocity. So we only want the first part of that. It's, it's, it's an n by 2 list. So we will take, let me see how I want to do this, theta 1 uh, colon 0. The two elements, they indexed 0 and 1, and we want the first one, which is index 0. Fix that. Um, just think about that. Time theta 1, yeah, that's correct. Plus, we want to put theta 2. And we can just plot theta 2, because theta 2 is just an individual list. Right? Theta 1, we know, is actually giving us the thetas and the x's, and we know the x's are the theta dots. So we want the first component, and we want all of them. So that's why I've used the colon to take the entire number of rows, and then really the first column. Okay, that's correct. Um, let's put a bit of text on here. Um, 
the title, let's create a string that says, hmm, let's do this, plot title, pendulum motion. Um, I think we want to include what the initial angle is here. So what I'm going to do is put plus S. And then up here, oops, I'll define S. S is equal to initial angle equals, and then what was the initial angle? It was initial angle. But we need to convert that to a string. Let's just put degrees. Those parentheses. Okay, so the title is going to be pendulum motion plus initial angle and whatever it is in degrees. Okay. And let's put an X and Y label. So plot X label is just time in seconds. Oh, I left out. That's no good. Okay, PLT, we'll do a Y label. And the Y label is just the angle in radians. Because we've done all our calculations in radians. Um, let's put a grid. And what else? We should add a legend. Uh, what do we want to call it? The first case is nonlinear. Second case would be linear. And where I want it located, we'll put it on the lower right. Oops, not an underscore. That should be a space. Lower right. And then finally, PLT show. And then we're going to run it. So we're running it. Let me just con collapse this a bit. Probably going to have to do a little bit of debugging. But actually, it's pretty short code. Besides our definitions, we've set up the parameters. We've created our time list, our time intervals, uh, initial conditions. Um, find the solution to the nonlinear problem. Find the solution to the linear problem and plot the results. All right, let's see if this runs. Uh, from matplotlib, oh, this should be import pyplot as plt. Line 17. Can't assign to operator. Uh, that's an equals. That should be a plus. That's a careless mistake. Let's try run it. Okay, global name X is not defined in line 10. Oh, I've got a Y here. That should be an X. Problem is actually in the line before. All right, and that should be it. Let's see. Okay, so there you go. So what we're seeing is the blue is the nonlinear case. The green is the linear case. Uh, raise the pendulum to a 45-degree angle, and you can see that the nonlinear case actually has a slightly lower frequency or a slightly longer period, if you want that the linear case is the green curve, and you can see that as time progresses, there's a difference, the difference grows. Interesting. So let's look at it if we did about 10 degrees now. I'd mentioned uh, previously that 10 degrees, the linear case holds, so instead of 45 degrees, let's go to 10 degrees, run it. And there you go. In the case of 10 degrees, those curves are almost identical. You can see a slight difference all the way here at 10 seconds. Um, but that looks pretty good. What happens if we did it at, let's say, 90 degrees or even more than 90 degrees? What if we went to 130 degrees? Now there's a big difference. You can see the blue nonlinear case looks way, way different. All right, and there you have it. 
I'll make this code available on GitHub. Uh, there'll be a link to it in the description. Hope you've enjoyed this video and found something useful in it. If you have, please go ahead and leave us comments or uh, give us a thumbs up, which will help other people get to see it. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch up with you in the next video.